Another thing that I wanted to bring up was bitwise operators. So bitwise operators are used to manipulate variables at the bit level. The bit level means like those bits that are in like in one byte there's eight bits. So those things are what I'm talking about. So bit level like this stuff. Bitwise operators are most commonly used with numerical variables to perform bit operations. And there are six bitwise operators in C++. And these are the six bitwise operators. All right, so let's just understand what this is talking about. We have six different bitwise operators. The first one is these two less than signs. They look like two insertion operators. These two greater than signs, they look like two extraction operators. This tilde, this ampersand, a pipe, and then there's a carrot. So over here we have this left shift, which is, uh, you could see that it's going towards the right, so it's called left shift. And then you could have, here, here's an example of left shift, shift bits in X left by Y, and we have right shift, and has uh, this going in the, uh, which is going in the left side, you'd see that's facing to the left side. So this is called right shift, and it's shift bits in X right by Y. And then we have tilde, bit, bitwise not, and then we have, it's like a negation, so flip all bits in X, it looks like a negation. And then we have an ampersand, bitwise and, so we have um, X and Y, so bitwise and, so this is gonna be, uh, we're gonna be understanding how this is gonna work too, because uh, you know like in and logical operators, when when two things are true, then it's, it's true, else if it's like one true and one is false, then it's false, or oh, both, things have to be true in order for this and operator to be true and then there's or using this pipe so bitwise or and in this case we have one th one thing at least one thing has to be true and if the other thing is false then it's still uh, according to that it's true but if both are false then it's false so we have um, this carrot bitwise exclusive or so meaning that whatever is or and it's gonna give the exclusive or touch to this. This could be understood through exclusive or exclusive nor gates, logical gates. So the first example we're gonna be taking is the left shift, which is the first one. And this is left shift. And the left shift is basically two insertion operators that are going towards the right side, but they're called left shift. Now, what we could he have here is that this thing before, this over here, would have some kind of variable, and would have some kind of variable or number here. N is come a, some kind of variable, and over here, N is defined as, let's say, 32. Now, N will be left shifted, and second operator decides the number of places to shift. So suppose we have two over here, means we're shifting this by two. So according to this, we could read this as similar to like this so we'd have n is equal to n and then would we'll have it multiplied so we could have this asterisk symbol and would be two the raised to the power so exponent here and then we'd have the portion which is two so this is how the formula goes so if we have x left shift of y x left shift of y can equal to x equals to x and then it we'll multiplies with the two raised to the power, so two raised to the power of y. So if this is y, so it's gonna be multiplying uh, raised to the power to this. So we have two, which is the general, and then we have the number, which was after that, which is two. So we're gonna put two over here. And then before that, we have n, which is x. So x is over here, n was here, so that's that. And then this is our new value for n, implementing this. So n was 32, we put 32 inside, asterisk and then we have two and we have to the power so to the to the power of two two to the power of two is four so 32 multiplied by four will equal to 88 so we're gonna have 88 over here so this is our new value for n so let's take an example of a left shift operator int x is equal to three now let's have int y is equal to something like nine now what we want to do is we want to say int z, so z is equal to x, and we have this left shift operator. So we can say this, and we have two. So what is this gonna mean? So we have x, over here x is three. Two meaning that decides the number of places to shift. In this case, we have to shift two places. So 
z equals 12 in this case so it would equal to 12 and in bits it would look like the numbers this but before that let's look at what three means in binary so three means like this nine means this so and when we're talking about this left shift it would be this which is 12. this is uh the left binary for that but the thing is that how is this done let's remember that formula so that formula was something like this so it was like x is equal to so the value of x is equal to x and then we had the multiplied with the two and then we had an exponent so we'd have an exponent and would have the number which is afterwards so y so or in this case we'd have um an x portion would have the three and over here we have two and then we'd have the number which is after that which is two so in this case it would be four and now four eight twelve so this equals two 12. Now 12 in binary means 1100. Zero, zero. So let's just have Z console output. So let's have this printed in our terminal screen. So error Z was not declared in this scope. The problem here is that these had to be commented. So it wasn't giving me the right. Now I understand now it should work. So if I like run through here, it should work. Yeah, there you go. 12 is over here. Pretty cool. So that's what we wanted, 12 in binary, which is this, but it appeared in the decimal formation. The right shift operator isn't that different. It's just a representative using these two greater than signs, which is pointing towards the left side. And we could have an example similar to the one we had for left shift. But so in right shift, we have, suppose we have X and Y. This is equal to something as X is equal to X and we have that divided by, not multiplied now. So we have x divided by two, and we have raised to the power of the uh, y. So this is how it's gonna be implemented. Suppose we have a very, let's say a value of n is equal to, say n is equal to 32. So if it, n is equal to 32 here, we'll have to put the value. So if we want a shift over here, so we'd say n, and we'd say right shift, and we want n right shifted with two, as the number so what we could do here is it's gonna be n so let's just have it implies and would say n is equal to n and then would have it divided so we'd have it divided by 2 and then we have the exponent here and then exponent after that is the 2 so over here would be 2 raised to the power of 2 and 2 raised to the power of 2 is pretty simple It's 4 so we could write 4 instead of that and for n, we have 32. So we could say 32 divided by four, simply eight. So this is gonna be our answer. So for instance, let's say we have the same variable. So int x is equal to three. And we have int y is equal to nine. And then we have, let's say z. So we'd have int z. And then we have that equal to y, which is the first one. And then we'd have this right shift operator with one. Now let's see roughly what would happen. Over here we have y, which is the value of nine. So it would be dividing with two raised to the power of the second value, which is after the right shift operator, this one. So we gotta just apply that over here. So we have two raised to the power of one, which is over here instead of y and two raised to the power of one, which is simply two, and two divide, nine divided by two. So nine divided by two will be 4.5, but in case of integer division that we're dealing with, it's just gonna be four. And four in binary is simple as this. So this is one, two, four, and then we have eight. So this is four in binary. So four should appear as our answer. Let's just run this code. So let's have a console output and let's have the value of z semicolon here and let's just run so over here we have four awesome so the other four bitwise operators are pretty easy and simple the one that we have is tilde and this is basically a negation and it's called a bitwise not so for instance if we have a binary number like this now 1010 means 10 in decimal so this is binary it's just going to flip or toggle the values over here we have one is going to be zero then zero will be one the one will be zero now and then the zero will be one so it's just going to be toggling it out and this is now one two four so we have five as the value over here so this is just the toggled value 
After that, we have the value of ampersand, which is another bitwise operator. So the bitwise operator of ampersand is pretty simple. Well, suppose we have a number, let's say one uh, zero zero, and over here on the bottom portion, let's say we have uh, zero zero one one. In and operators, it's like this. Both of them have to be true in order for the condition to be true. If one is false and the other is true, it would be always false. And if both are false, then it's definitely false. So over here, we have one condition true and the other condition as false. So definitely this is zero, which is false. Over here, um, this is another condition that is true and false, so it's false. And then we have over here, which is false as well. And over here is false as well. So this is how what it's gonna be replied. So this is the bitwise and operator for these two numbers which are above here. So these two numbers, bitwise and is this zero. If we talk about the bitwise or, which is denoted using this pipe symbol, that's, that's if one of the conditions are true and the other condition is false, then it's true. If both are true, then it's definitely true. And if both are false, then it's obviously false. So over here we have, uh, this has true because one is true. This is true because one is true. This is true, which is one is true. And over here, which is true. And so this is the number after all of the operations of this bitwise or. So now let's talk about the bitwise XOR or exclusive OR. And this is represented using this caret symbol. And what it does is that it does an exclusive OR operation. So now let's go and check the truth table for the exclusive OR operation. Here we're on electrical4u.com and over here I could see that there is this truth table which has 0011 and then B is 0101. And then the X output is zero in case of both are zero. And then we have, this should be one, and this is one. And then this should be one, and this is one. But in case of both are true, this is zero. And the reason for this is that it's exclusive or, and it's not simple or. Or simple would be zero, one, one, one. But in case of exclusive or, it's zero, one, one, zero. Because exclusiveness means, like if one is of true and the other is false, then it's true, exclusively. And it's zero, and then one is true, and one is false, then it's exclusively, so it means one. And in case of them being same or, same inputs like same false so it's zero and if it's same true then it's zero that's how i learned it